Have you ever looked at all of your medications and thought, gah, I take a lot of pills. Yes, my doctor thinks these are good for me, but do I really need all of them? Are they all really helping me? And are any of them actually hurting me or my brain or my memory? In this video, I'll cover some common problems that we experience that make our doctors want to prescribe medication for them. I'll also cover the three top medications that are prescribed that might help the condition they're prescribed for, but can also hurt our brain and our memory. At the end, I'll give you a link to a resource that you can use to easily check all of your medications. Just type in the names so that you can see are there any or are there a combination that might be negatively impacting your brain and your memory. So let's get going. The truth of the matter is that there is a tendency to prescribe medications to fix a problem. And then when you start taking that medication and there's some weird unwanted side effect, it's also pretty darn easy to prescribe another medication to fix the new problem. And on and on. Or sometimes medications are prescribed that might have been great for you or fine when you were 30 or 40, but not so much when you're 65 or 70. Or sometimes there's no one to look at your medication with an informed eye and say, hmm, are those medications necessary or is this combination of medications good for you, especially as you get older? I'm not saying that all prescribing doctors have a problem of prescribing too much medication or never checking your medications, but sometimes it happens where medications are brought on board and never questioned or maybe impacting us in ways we don't want as we age. So it makes sense for us to be as proactive as possible so that we can look critically at our own medications and bring up questions or concerns with our providers. So let's talk about the medications that might be hurting more than they're helping. But first, I know what you're probably saying. I'm pretty healthy. I hardly take any medications. What problems even require those kind of medications? So let's start with one of the big ones, having to go pee. <laughs> so you know sometimes how your body seems to kind of lose control, like this super excited puppy that just can't wait to get outside and go pee? Well, that's an issue in real life because sometimes you're not in a situation where you can easily go find a bathroom or maybe you're even trying to sleep and getting up over and over again to go pee is just not a wonderful thing. This is where bladder control medications come into play. When your bladder has this sudden, oh, you gotta go pee moments or moments where you might actually leak because you're not going to the bathroom in time, those medications can just serve as a relaxant. It helps so you don't have to go pee 300 times in the middle of the night. Some bladder control medications target a neurotransmitter called acetylcholine. By decreasing acetylcholine, your bladder muscles don't contract as much or as often, and therefore you don't have to urinate as much. This sounds magical, but acetylcholine is also used for something else. It facilitates memory, learning, and attention. We need acetylcholine to have a good memory. In fact, the drugs that are prescribed for Alzheimer's disease work in this system to make acetylcholine more readily available for our brain so it works a little better. So which bladder control medications are the worst for your brain and your memory? They include Ditropan and Detrol. Whether or not you're taking those specific medications or others, talk to your doctor about your concerns and about the idea that those medications are anticholinergic. You might wanna be prepared for the idea that your provider might not know that those things are bad for your brain, as a recent study found that only 44% of prescribing providers were aware that these anticholinergic medications are bad for our brain as we age. Now that we've talked about the curse of having to pee, what else could there be? Well, another common problem is feeling worried or anxious, and sometimes to the extent where we can't even sleep because of it. Who hasn't worried at some point? Or a lot of different points. But at some point, for some people, it gets worse and worse and causes more problems. 
If this happens and you talk to your doctor about it, they may be tempted to prescribe a medication to try to help. If they turn to a class of medications called benzodiazepines, this can be a real problem. One of the biggest ways that they work is targeting a neurotransmitter called GABA, which really helps to calm down your system. This can be really great when we're feeling anxious and we can't sleep, but it can also cause problems with slowed reaction time, a propensity to fall more, being more confused, not being able to pay attention, and having memory problems. This can be especially prominent with people as they age. Examples include Valium, Ativan, and Xanax. If you're prescribed these medications on a regular basis, it might be a good idea to talk to your doctors about whether or not these are the best options for you. So what happens if we're not feeling all that anxious, but the other end of the spectrum, where we're feeling down or cruddy or depressed or not motivated or tearful, or maybe just every time it gets to be dark and dreary and wintry, we feel like crud. Our provider may want to help us by prescribing an antidepressant medication. Now I am all for medications when we need them. And sometimes medication for depression or anxiety can make a huge difference. What we're focusing on today is not the wonderful debate about whether or not we should even be prescribed these medications. It is important and I will likely do a video on that as well. But today we're talking about the type of medications that are prescribed. Now one area to avoid are kind of the old school antidepressants. They're called tricyclic antidepressants, and one example is Elevil or amitriptyline. This medication works by increasing certain neurotransmitters in the brain, like serotonin and norepinephrine, but it also decreases other neurotransmitters, like acetylcholine. As we said earlier in the video, that's a bad idea when it comes to wanting to have a good brain or functioning memory. But it's not just the older types of medications that can cause problems. There's a newer medication out there that is often prescribed and it also impacts acetylcholine. It's called Paxil or paroxetine and doctors who are sensitive to aging concerns and having a good brain as we age understand that this is not one of the medications they want to use as people get older. There's a way to check all of your medications to see how they impact what they call cholinergic burden, or this idea that when you put in all your medications individually, how do they add up when they're impacting acetylcholine? There's a handy online tool where you can type in all of your medications and it'll tell you. This tool is based on some scales that were developed a few years ago, so it may not have every medication that's of concern nowadays, but it is a great place to start, and I will link it in the description below. If your medications cause a red flag with this tool, then you can head straight to your doctor and have a conversation about your concerns. If you think that you may have other medications that aren't on the list, I'm also going to link a more recent study that actually increased the number of medications to over 200. You'll be able to hit the search key and type in your specific medication and see if it comes up. I really hope that this information is useful to you in getting you a step closer to being informed for you and or your loved ones and the medications that you're taking. If you think it's useful, you could pass on the video to your friends so they could check their medications too. And if you haven't watched my video on over-the-counter medications that can be bad for your brain, feel free to check that one out. Can't wait to see you next time. Bye.